Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a multi-step equation when you have the variable on the same side. So what I have here is kind of six examples. And basically what I'm going to do is just going to work through each example and kind of explain you know, how we solve each one, but also kind of reiterate the same process over and over. So when we're solving an equation, the main important thing is we need to identify the variable that we're solving for. Now, these are one variable multi-step equations. So there's only one variable we're going to solve for. You can see each equation has you know, a different variable. Um, you know, only one variable selected, but there's multiple forms of that variable. So the main important thing we need to do to isolate that one variable is we got to kind of combine them first. So to combine the variables, we have to do what we call simplifying. So um, when you learn to like simplified expressions, you know, combine like terms and so forth, that's basically what we're going to do. In this first example, though, we cannot combine any of my variables until we have. Um, until we have applied the process of 2 times 2c plus 1. So we're going to need to apply our operation of a distributive property, so therefore we can get rid of our parentheses. So by taking the 2 and multiplying it by 2c and by 2, 1, 2 times 2c is going to give you 4c. 2 times 1 is going to be a positive 2. Then minus c equals negative 13. Now I have an equation um, where I have the same variable, but I have two of them. Um, well, I have four, four of them and then a negative one. So I need to combine them. Now, I'm going to show you this this one time, and you know you might might be a little elementary for you as well. But a lot of times students get tr they have trouble when we're combining them. Well, they're on the same side of the equal sign, so just think of that as you know com we can just combine them as they are. We can apply the operations. We don't need to use the properties of equality like we've used for solving. So the best way to kind of understand that is I can simply rewrite this equation with the variables next to each other and then the number at the end. Now you can see all I'm doing is saying 4c minus c. Well, we know that answer is 3c plus 2 equals negative 13. Now what I've done is I've simplified my equation down to a two-step equation. And that's the most important thing when we're solving multi-step equations is you want to simplify it down to a two-step problem. Because then, once it's a two-step, now we can use, your, use our inverse operations to solve for our c, because the c has now been um, combined to just one value of c. So now I'll use my subtraction property of equality. Then I have 3c equals negative 13 minus 2 is going to be a negative 15. Then I'll divide by 3 on both sides. That goes to 1, so I'm left with 1c equals negative 15 divided by 3 is going to be a negative 5. And there we go. Now we have solved the problem. On the next example here, we have another, we have another parentheses. So I need to apply this to property so I can get rid of the parentheses. So in this case, I'm going to distribute a 2. So I have 8u. 2 times u is going to be a positive 2u. And 2 times negative 10 is a negative 20 equals 0. Now in this case, my u's are already by, right next to each other, so I can simply combine them to give me 10u minus 20 equals 0. Now again, we're at a two-step equation. So again, what I have to do is undo everything that's happening to my u. So you can see my u is being subtracted by 20, and it's also being multiplied by 10. So to undo subtraction, I will add a 20 to both sides. Then I'm left with 10u equals a positive 20. Now undo multiplication of 10 by dividing by 10 on both sides and I get u equals 2. All right. Now, once it starts getting confusing is when we include parentheses, but there's actually not um, an operation used for those parentheses. So in this next example, you can see I have parentheses here, but it's not being multiplied by another other than 1. So really, the only reason why we use parentheses was just to group them. So um, to group them away from the 2x, away from the 1. But in reality, we don't really need the parentheses. We're not applying additional um, multiple, we're not applying additional operation. So therefore, I can just rewrite this as x plus 2x minus 4 equals 11 without parentheses. See, before we had to multiply by 2. Now we don't have to multiply by 2, so we can just eliminate the parentheses. Now I can combine my x plus 2x, which is going to give me a 3x minus 4 equals 11. Now, again, it's a two-step equation. So now I can just solve. So to undo subtraction by 4, I'll add 4. 3x equals 15. Then divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 5 again. So very similar to uh, some of the other problems we've done. Um, the next example here, again, I don't have any parentheses. So when you don't have any parentheses again, we don't need to use those parentheses. There's not, I mean, we have parentheses, but we're not multiplying by anything else. You can just, um, so therefore, I can just rewrite the problem. x minus 2 plus 2x plus 4 equals 14. 
Now, I could rearrange it like I did in the first problem. But hopefully you guys understand, since everything is on the same side, I can just combine the variables and the numbers. So x plus 2x is going to give me 3x. Negative 2 plus 4 is going to give me a positive 2 equals 14. Notice how I didn't use, again, the properties of equality. This is just one of the major mistakes I see from students, is they want to use the properties of equality when you have numbers and variables on the same side. You only use the properties of equality when you, when you want to subtract on both sides of the equation side. Since these are all on the same side, we can just combine them. So now I've combined them to a two-step equation. So now I will use my properties of equality. So I'll subtract the two on both sides. That's going to leave me with a 3x equals 12. Then divide by 3 on both sides. And I get x equals 4. Uh, for the next example here, we have multiple parentheses, right? We have a parenthesis here and a parenthesis there. So again, what we're going to do is just apply distributive property twice. So I'm going to multiply 12 over here and a negative 2 over here. Therefore, that'll give me 12r. 12 times 3 is going to be a positive 36. Now, make sure when you're distributing a negative or a 2, a negative 2, you got to make sure you distribute a negative, the actual negative 2, not just 2 because that 2 is negative. So negative 2 times r is a negative 2r. Negative 2 times 5 is going to give me a negative 10 equals a negative 3r. Ooh, I have the prompt variable on the same side. Crap. Let's just pretend the variable's not on both sides, because that's in another video. Um, so now when I go ahead and solve this, um, again, we're just going to combine our numbers here. So I have 12r minus 2r is going to give me a 10r. 36 minus 10 is going to give me a positive 26 equals a negative 3. Now, again, I use my inverse operations. So I subtract 26 on both sides. And I get 10r equals a negative 29. Then divide by 10, divide by 10. And I get r equals a negative 29 tenths, which cannot be simplified. So that's going to be my final answer. Uh, the last example is I had to include something with some fractions. And you can see I have two, fra I have two fractions multiplied by variables. And I just can't combine them like I did you know, up here. Because when we have fractions, we can only combine them with common denominators. So one way you could do this is get common denominators for both fractions and then combine them to get one variable. The easier way that I like to do this is just to get rid of fractions altogether. So to do that, what we do is instead of getting common denominator, we're just going to multiply by the common denominator. So we can really rewrite 4 as 4 over 1. Now you look at the common denominator of 3, 5, and 1. That means the common multiple, the number that 3, 5, and 1 all divide into. The smallest of that is going to be 15. So I'll just write in LCM equals 15, least common multiple, or I should just write least common denominator. So now I'm going to multiply everything by 15. Okay? So therefore, that's going to be 15 times, and I'm going to work this one out because the students a lot of times have trouble with this, 3 2 thirds m minus, I'm going to multiply 15 times, oops, let's write it the other way, 3 fifths m times 15, and then equals 4 over 1 times 15. So basically, all I'm doing is applying distributive property by multiplying my 15 down each one. Now, what happens when you multiply your LCM or LCD by every single one of those terms, you end up eliminating your denominator because your denominator evenly divides into the LCM. So 3 divides into 15 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10m. Um, 5 divides into 15 3 times. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. So it's minus a 9m equals 4 times 5 is going to be 60. Now I can easily combine 10m minus uh, 9m, which is just going to be m, and that's equal to 60. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve multi-step equations when you have the variable on the same side. Thanks.